you've probably been taught the importance of being patient in life. Well, I think it's true. I think sometimes it's important to be patient, but other times it's important to hustle. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of hustling in real estate and how you can make a lot of money by being impatient when it comes to investing in real estate. My name is Shiloh Lundahl, and you are watching the Improved channel focused on real estate investing. The idea of being impatient is usually looked at in a bad way. And when it comes to investing, it really can be very bad, but it can also be very good. So I wanted to go in and talk a little bit about this because this has been, for me, both a gift and a curse. It's a gift <laughs> and a curse. So when it comes to being impatient, a lot of times we think of not being willing to wait for those good things that are on their way. Now, being willing to wait can be good. But at the same time, I've heard the phrase that those who wait get the leftovers from those who hustle. So I understand the importance of hustling. When it comes to investing, you really want to be able to hustle and take advantage of the opportunities that come. I went to a um, training once, and in this training, and it was a very effective um, little object lesson, there was a, the trainer was up front and he pulled out a $20 bill. And he said, hey, who will give me a 10 for a 20? Everybody was looking at him and they were just kind of confused. And then there was one guy that ran from the back of the of the room with a $10 bill, grabbed the $20 bill out of his hand and gave him his 10, and then went back and sat down. The guy up, said, up front said, who will give me a, a five for a 10? And then, you know, somebody else, I think, you know, somebody else went and grabbed a $5 bill and switched out the five for a 10. Um, and then he said the same thing, who will give me a, a one for five? And you know, somebody else did the same thing. The whole idea of that object lesson was to hustle. That good things came to those who hustled. And that if you took too long to try to figure out everything that was going on, that you lost the opportunity. So in that aspect, being impatient is a great thing because I'm not going to patiently wait for the explanation before I make the decision, hey, do I want to do this? If I'm ready, and I see the opportunity, I want to quickly go and take advantage of the opportunity because if I don't, then somebody else is gonna take advantage of that opportunity and then I'll miss out. Being impatient can also be a bad thing when it comes to real estate investing. Imagine you are a new investor and you really, really wanna get in the game of investing, but you don't have a lot of skills and knowledge and know-how, um, but you wanna get a property and so you jump into the game and you get a property as soon as you can because you don't want to take the time to learn more about it, to um, connect with other investors, to maybe get some, some coaching and some mentoring on how to get a property um, that would be a good investment. And so you jump in and you get your, your first investment. Now, some people might think, hey, that's not bad because at least you got in the game. And that's true. It's good to jump in and get into the game. However, being a little bit more patient and um, getting maybe some mentoring or some coaching on it, you know, reading up some books, and then being able to connect with other investors and say, hey, what do you think about this deal? All of those things can be really helpful so that you don't jump into a property that isn't going to ultimately be very beneficial to you. So again, the idea of being an impatient investor can be great when it comes to hustling, being quick to jump on the ball and take advantage of the deal. Also, being an impatient investor can get you into some pretty bad deals. So, how do you, what do you do? How do you make it so that your impatience can be more beneficial to you than not beneficial to you? The key is experience, and the key is learning. So, the more you learn and the more experience you get over time, the more you're able to evaluate a deal a lot quicker and then take advantage of it if it's a good deal. I get probably 100 different wholesale deals to my inbox every single day. And I'm able to go through all 100 of those deals within probably five to 10 minutes in a day. And so you might think, well, how are you evaluating these deals so quickly? 
Well, the way I do it is I take a look and see what cities they're in because I know the cities that I invest in where I know the market really well. And so I'll just kind of start um, scrolling through, scrolling through. Oh, here's a property, one of the cities that I invest in. Okay, so I know about how much the properties should go for in that area. How much of a discount is this wholesaler selling this for? Then I take a look at the pictures. How much roughly would the rehab costs be? And so as I'm looking at it, I'm able to determine, hmm, you know what? This looks like it could be a pretty good deal. As soon as I figure out it could be a pretty good deal, I'll call up the wholesaler and I'll say, hey, I'm looking at this property. I'd like to know um, about the major mechanicals. You know, tell me about the foundation. Tell me about the roof. Tell me about the electrical. Tell me about the plumbing. And then uh, tell me about the AC unit. So as the wholesaler can kind of describe these things, it'll give me a good indicator about any big ticket items that I might need to budget for. Other than those things, I can usually tell the rest by the pictures. If I like it and if I can tell it's a good deal, then I'll say, you know, I'm interested in getting this property. And so they'll send me over the contract. I might be buying it for what they're sending it out for, or I might offer just a little bit less depending on, on my numbers. But then I can go ahead, I can sign the contract, I can um, either run over to the bank and get a, a cashier's check over to the title company, or I can call up my assistant, have my assistant do that, or I can just wire the money to the title company. And then I get it under contract. Okay, and so um, the best deals that I know that come from wholesalers, they're usually gone within an hour or two. And so if you're new and you're just not sure exactly how to do this, you have the disadvantage because people that have been doing this for a lot longer are able to evaluate deals within a few minutes. And then when they see it and they can tell it's a good deal, they're able to jump on it. So that's the benefit of being impatient. Rather than waiting and having everything in, in line in order to make that offer, you go, you make that offer. Now let's say that I go in there and I recognize, oh wow, this is not in the neighborhood I thought it was going to be in. This is not going to work out then I may, within uh, a day, just call up the wholesaler and say, hey, you know, this deal isn't going to work out for me for these two reasons. And if, um, if I know the wholesaler, a lot of times they'll just refund my earnest money. If I don't, they may say, well, you put non-refundable earnest money down. And then I put that in the calculation and I say, is losing $3,000 worth not getting into this deal? And if the answer is yes, then I'll walk away. And I've done that before. I've walked away from earnest money deposit. And oh boy, it saved me a lot of money not buying that property. The idea is being impatient can be both a good thing and a bad thing. So make it a good thing. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're liking the content that I'm posting, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, click the notification bell. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.